Hello, my name is Obi. This is my wife, Aminat. We are successful cocoa farmers and we grow additional food crops to diversify our income and nutrition. We have three children. We are members of a cocoa cooperative that provides marketing and technical services for us. Our experience with our cocoa farm has been very good. We earn a lot of money from sales of cocoa. And from our other crops, we still have enough nutritious food for our family and feed for our animals. We learned how to produce quality cocoa using good agricultural practices from the farmer business school. Do you want to be like us? Follow us and learn about our business secrets. We have two parts on our cocoa farm. On one part, the trees are seven years old and an improved hybrid variety. We harvest a lot of big pores there. On the other half, the trees are 24 years old and a non-improved variety. I harvest less and smaller pores there. Soon, I will replant the older part of my farm to ensure the best possible yield. We make sure that we plant new seedlings far away from any tree infected with the cocoa swollen shoot virus disease. Pruning helps cocoa trees to produce bigger pods. Insects and disease do not like to attack pruned trees. After the main harvest, before the tree starts flowering, we cut these branches and chop on and we prune the tree to be not higher than 4 meters. This is important to provide more air and sunlight for the tree and help to prevent black pod disease. This year we hire a professional to do the pruning and removing chopons. This service is organized by our cooperative and we pay a fee for it. We notice that by doing so, we save time and money in the end. I buy my fertilizer now from a licensed agro dealer. To buy the right quantity, we have counted the exact number of trees on our farm. When we planted our cocoa trees, we used good agricultural practices. We planted with distances of 3 meters between rows and lines. This gives us 1,100 cocoa trees on one hectare. This is 440 trees per acre. When I know the number of trees on my farm, I can calculate the amount of fertilizer I need. I follow the recommendations of my extension agent to calculate the right amount for my farm. I buy the fertilizer between now and at least one month before I fertilize. I therefore store the bags in a dry place. The soil provides nutrients and water to my cocoa tree, but weeds steal them. Every time the weeds reach up to my knees, or 30 to 40 centimeters, I brush them. That is mostly three times a year. When we clean the farm, there are less insects and diseases. So we need less pesticides. Before rain starts, I take off all rotten and black pots. I bring them to a place outside of my cocoa farm. I bend them to reduce diseases spreading to my cocoa farm. I am very careful to prevent bushfire. By doing so, we need less fungicides and save money. When rain starts, I fertilize my trees. The rain helps the tree to use the fertilizer. This can give me up to twice as much yield compared to not fertilizing my trees. For my mature cocoa tree older than 6 years, I spread 350 gram of fertilizer in a circle of 1 to 1 and a half meters around my cocoa tree. I watch out for black pore disease. If I see signs of black pore disease from May to October on my trees, I spray an approved fungicide. If I am unsure about the signs and which fungicide to use, I can ask my cooperative for support and contact our extension agents. They always know the latest recommendations. Together with our cooperative, 
We worked on an early warning system so that we can avoid spraying too much insecticides because some insecticides can kill bees. And bees are important for the pollination of our cocoa trees and thus a plentiful harvest. We visit our cocoa farm regularly. If we find merit damage on 5 to 25 out of 100 trees, only the affected areas need spraying. If I find merit damage on more than 25 out of 100 trees, the whole farm needs spraying. In the event that we have to spray, our cooperative offers the service by a trained professional sprayer. Every two to three weeks, I harvest the ripe pots. At the same time, I also remove the pores that have a disease. I am very careful when cutting the pots. This protects the flower cushions that give me cocoa pots. Remember, a healthy unharmed tree produces many flowers and therefore pods in the next season. Not later than three days after harvesting the pots, I break them open. We use a wooden club to break them. This is safer for us and doesn't damage the beans. I remove flat beans and other waste from the pot. Under a tree on a slight slope, I make a bed of plantain leaves. I put approximately four bags full of fresh beans with the pulp on it. I then cover the heap with plantain leaves and fix it with wood. Every two days we open the heap and turn the beans. After six or seven days, I completely open the heap. Well fermented beans dry quickly and are of good quality. I put up a drying table directly in the sun where I spread the beans evenly after fermentation. We turn them at least two times a day. At this time, I remove any waste, any flat or black beans, and any beans that have sprouted. I know that the beans are dry if they crack when I press them only lightly. This takes at least seven days. Remember, every evening or in the event that it rains, even if it is only very lightly, I have to cover the beans with a plastic cover. We make sure that dry cocoa beans don't mold. We store them in clean jute bags on wooden pallets in a well ventilated dry place away from the walls. Our group has set up storing spaces for us so we don't have to worry about destroying our work from the whole season by not storing the beans properly. As a good cocoa farmer, I send my children to school. I save money and pay their school fees and school materials in time. When my children come home after school, they do their homework to get good results. Because remember, our children are the future of our family and our country. Throughout the year, we manage our money daily. We have a bank account. Directly when we receive money after sales, we put it into the bank account. If we need money at a certain time, we only take out the exact amount needed. By doing so, we have enough money to buy nutritious food for our family, to pay back our loan and the school fees for our children. Since we work in a cooperative with our fellow farmers, our income has increased and we manage our farm better. The services offered by our group help us to do better business with farming. We are able to save some of the money to replant the rest of our farm. We harvested 1,000 kilograms of dried beans. With a good price for the cocoa, 
our money in can exceed our money out from three to five times. Now you know our secret of doing good business with quality cocoa. We wish you good luck and a lot of success.